Hello, hello, welcome everyone back to our bedroom and beyond. We have a very special guest today, Miss Catherine Ducey, who is a master life coach. And we are going to figure out what that actually means and have all the stories, all the things that really allowed her to be who she is today. So welcome, welcome, Miss Catherine. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share a little bit. And I'm fully willing to get very vulnerable for your audience. So like, I want you to really go there, Dana. <laughs> okay. Absolutely you are the kind of host. So I just want to give you full permission. <laughs> yes. And you know, our main focus here on the bedroom and beyond is like taboo topics or intimacy. And for me, I truly believe vulnerability equals intimacy. So I'm very excited about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I got tell you. me, how did you get started? What was your journey like? Mm. Um, the journey to becoming a master coach or yeah. like when I was born? <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure somewhere along the line, it'll be fused into one thing, but yeah, we just yeah. want to get to know you and who you are. So great. Okay. So um, I, uh, well, maybe I'll give you a little bit of information on how I actually became a coach. So I was actually fired from being the head of HR in 2017. I think it was, um, I was overseeing 200 people in a really beautiful and awesome, don't have anything bad to say about it. Uh, Canadian ad agency. Oh. And I was doing what I knew to do, which was to life coach people because the issues that are presenting at work are not related to work. It's really related to core issues, right? Root issues. There's something else going on here. So I was uh, life coaching people in, you know, my employees in boardrooms and in my office and Lots of beautiful things were unfolding, including a lot of our people starting to leave because they were finding out, oh my God, I'm not meant to be the head of creative. I'm actually supposed to be more hands-on and building homes and all this stuff. And it was like, you should go do that. Okay. So you can see how that would be a great thing for them, but not a great thing for the company. And so I was packaged out, <laughs> less fired, more like, here's a, here's a severance. We think you need to go and do your own thing. Um, and when they said that, do your own thing. I said, all right, wow, you just saw something in me. And I hired a coach the next day. And I said, I want to, I don't want, ever want to go back to corporate and I want to start doing my own business. And, and so began my journey into becoming a full-time life coach, which then I went on to become a certified master coach. So I am trauma-informed, I'm somatically trained, and I have done a lot of incredible studying, um, not only of others, but of myself. So my journey really starts because my whole life really fell apart when I was 33. Um, so we're going almost nine years ago now. I'm 42 this month. Ooh. And yeah, and uh, this is really exciting. So Sagittarian. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I started to lose a lot of my hair very quickly. And women will often tell you that, like, that is a sign that there's probably something going on on a deeper level, like hormonally. But um, for me, what was presenting was, uh, at the time I couldn't see it, but a, a long life of repressing who I really was and showing up as what I really thought you wanted me to be. And I had become several different people and personas and... Um, was living actually like quite a, a lot of like lies and um, really struggling with self-worth, self-esteem, uh, in and out of relationships, drinking constantly. Uh, I was into drugs. I, I was, I had debt that was, I was way in over my head. <laughs> and, um, but to look at me, you wouldn't know everybody thought, wow, she's just got her shit together. She's so lovely and kind and fun. And, you know, and she listens and she's just there for you. But 
everything that I was doing for all of you guys, I was just not doing for myself. So I was living a life totally out of integrity and I was really suffering. I was really suffering and, and didn't really know that. So that all started just over, you know, or about 10 years ago. Um, and that's where I started doing personal development work. And uh, many of your listeners may be familiar with this program. I have only great things to say about Landmark. So I actually got into Landmark. That was I had no idea. Oh my goodness. So I have to say Landmark was the mm -hmm. first personal development company I ever joined. Mm -hmm. That's okay. amazing. Oh my good. Landmark Ian, hi. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. There is a bit of like an E to it. <laughs> so yeah, I did. I started Landmark and uh, I walked out of that first weekend that everybody knows it's the Landmark, the forum, and you have no freaking idea what you're getting yourself into. And they like jack up the AC in this really cold industrial type room. And it's like, what the heck have I got myself into? And uh, it was like 33 hours of like intense looking inward. Um, and I walked out of that place on Sunday night and thought, what I, I actually was like, who doesn't know about this? Cause everybody needs to know about this like immediately. And I'm absolutely going to be the person who goes and tells everybody and be <laughs> and is that person. Uh, and I went through the whole, I, I did the forum, I did the advanced, I did SELP, I coached, I did all the things I was there for a year and it just turned my life around in a really beautiful way. So that's how things really started for me. Um, and then from there, I just started hiring coaches and getting into the industry and following people on Instagram and getting really inspired and noticing the changes that were happening in my life. And, you know, also noticing the people that started to fall away and, and the opportunities that followed and all that beautiful stuff that most people probably resonate with. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's how I got started. It was a health thing that kicked it off. And then it's like, all right something's going on. And a good friend of mine introduced me to Landmark, actually. She's like, I think this is really going to help you. And so, great. Here we are. Mm -hmm. Shout out to all the friends, ourselves included, who have shared Landmark. Yeah. I was in the exact same boat. I actually, the person that provided me this opportunity with Landmark, we were friends since like, I think we were three years old in the dance community. And something happened where one of our mutual friends had passed away and it created some stuff that we had to deal with on our own. So we separated for some time and we actually just had a conversation last week about recreating our relationship and what that would look like. And I just fell into tears of joy because I never thought that was going to be possible again for us to be connected. And I really truly believe Landmark is the reason, the underlining reason of why I even wanted that possibility. So, so kudos to all you because we are different people. <laughs> Congratulations. I love that way to recreate that relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm actually currently an SELP. So yeah, I did the hop, skip and a jump. So I did forum advanced course and then I was in the assisting program at the center at the time and my leader the one that was running the office she's like you should just do ILP and do the introduction leaders program and then I really understand why it is the curriculum that it is SELP is the missing link for community so very very wow cool. Oh my gosh. No wonder you're an SELP right now. I was feeling this like unstoppable energy to you. I was like, okay, what's happening? Here we go. Yeah. SELP, self-expression leadership program. What a fantastic, fantastically run. It's so well executed. And like, it, it actually made me a better coach. Absolutely. Hands down, hands down. Um, it makes you stand in your leadership and not deviate and be in integrity and all that good stuff. Right. Uh, it's so fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another line of <laughs> duality here. It's very cool. I really appreciate you. Um, yeah. So how, how do you work with people? I know master life coach can really encompass a lot of things, but who are you yeah. finding that are most drawn to you and like, in what ways do you enjoy working with your clients? Good question. So um, I am someone who works with not only the mind, but the body. Okay. So I am a woman who lived in her head 
for her whole, most of her life. I have a mother who lives in her head. I have a father who lives in his head. There was very little, um, we would be, I, I would say we were a family that was actually quite like, uh, we, I heard we had a low tolerance for feelings, a low tolerance for emotions. We had a low tolerance for anything bodily related. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So like I, I wore a badge on my sleeve for a decade that I didn't cry for a decade. Like there was not a lot of in connection, connectedness to myself and my emotions. So what I teach is what I've gone through and embodied. I don't teach anything that I have no idea what it is. <laughs> you know, like, in fact, I will be honest. I have tried that in the past. I've like, you know, taken something from someone else. I'm like, that's a great idea. Maybe I'll do that. It doesn't work because everything is about energetics. Mm -hmm. And when you are not embodied in what you are speaking about, there is a different energy to you and a different tone and a different way that you might even like hold yourself that we're always in touch with as human beings. We can tell, you can tell just by looking at someone that if they, what they're saying is like embodied, if it is, or if it's not, you can just see it. You can see it in their eyes. You can hear it in their tone. You can feel it in there, just the resonance, right? So I only teach what I know and I only share what I know. And I only guide people through what I have boldly and bravely gone through myself. Um, so today, as it stands right now, I'm on the other side of divorce and my husband and I, we separated 14 months ago. Um, I could not have talked about a topic like divorce before this <laughs> because I had no idea what it actually entails from a physical perspective, an emotional, a spiritual or a mental. And suddenly, not suddenly over the course of the last you know year and a bit, I've become a very embodied woman who can speak to what this is like. So right now, what I find I'm attracting is a lot of women and men actually, but women predominantly on Instagram through my stories and my reels who are going through relationship stuff and are sort of, so you know what I actually attract my love is I have lived with this victim-y side of me for a long time where it was like not my fault. And that's also not my fault that I had that that sort of persona. That was something I definitely <laughs> took on. I took yeah. that on growing up. It was just mm -hmm. what I was around. It was like the just it was the way that my family protected ourselves. It was it was yeah. just a very safe space to be for us. And um, while it's very safe, it can also be very disempowering. But so I, and not that, and so I speak a lot in my stories and Instagram about all the stuff I discovered about myself in my marriage and mm -hmm. all the ways in which I was not showing up, all the stories I had, all the ways that I was disempowered, all the ways that I was blaming my partner. I never speak about Chris's perspective and my ex-husband because he's not here right but there's obviously a whole other side to it <laughs> and if he was here he'd be like by the way <laughs> spotty you got it she attracted me because we're at the same vibration it all makes sense you can just really substitute what you're she's saying about herself with me like bob's your uncle but um but yeah so i but for myself I realized coming out of that and it took me a while to really see it like wow I was really deep in this story mm -hmm. and you know, the deeper I went throughout the whole last 14 months where I've stayed sober, single, celibate, and really sat with some of this pain was that at the, at the core, I really have felt like there has been something deeply wrong with me since I was little, mm. like deeply missing. And that I'm a very bad, bad person, bad girl. And, you know, if you, you, look like where did that really start for me it was my parents were not present in my life really for the first 10 years I was I had a babysitter that I lived with for most of my first 10 years and I definitely developed some stories around you know not being chosen and not being enough and not being loved and not being lovable and I carried that into my teens and into my adulthood and it did an absolute number on me and so 
all those victimy ways that I was showing up. It was all just a way to protect this part of me that felt very tender and very fragile. Mm. Um, that's there's just something very wrong with you because your parents didn't choose you. Mm. you know, they chose their work, and they chose in the they didn't actually choose each other in the end. They actually separated, and then my mother chose a man very quickly within the nine months that my dad and her separated, and it was. It was just them and they were off doing their own thing all the time. And okay, so now I'm not chosen again all through my teens. So there's there was a lot of um a lot of like heartbreak that I was carrying around that I, I wasn't even aware of. And so fast forward to today, you asked me the question, like, how do I who do like how do I work with people? Well, how I work is I show up as myself and I'm very honest about what I'm going through and what I'm dealing with and what my thoughts are and what my feelings are. So people can find themselves in me mm -hmm. and then I attract them. Right. So like attract, like, and mo more often or not, I'm attracted to the coach who's done what I have done, who, what I am dealing with and who has made it through onto the other side. Right. I don't want to work with a feminine embodiment coach who was born super in her feminine because <laughs> it's really right. hard for her to really like get to the core of like what I'm dealing with. <laughs> right. Right. She's like, I've always been in my feminine, but like, just do it, babe. <laughs> oh, my smart. goodness. Just oh. So, you know, what I, I love that about me is that I, I use my pain and my, my shame and my guilt and all that stuff and all of that guilt, that sort of like um, victimy stuff as a way to present and to be like, hey, look, I'm going to level the playing field for you. I am no better or worse. I see you. I've made it on the other side. I get this now. I feel it. I see what's happening. Like, I don't even say to people work with me because you and I are manifesting generators. We're not even supposed to say that. No. Work with me. No, I just actually put it out and the people will respond, right? Yes. Putting out that message. Absolutely. And it's, it's very interesting. So for everyone that doesn't know, um, human design is a beautiful blueprint of the soul, so to speak. There's a lot more intricate things in there, but um, Catherine and I are actually the same energy type, which is probably why I was attracted to us to be here in the first place. And as you were telling your story about your younger years, I can really hear myself in that. You know, mm -hmm. my story may sound a little different, but the impacts and the guilt and the victimy things are all showing up the same. You know, like uh, I had a family full of people that were sick. My mom had Crohn's. My sister was mentally ill. And my dad passed away when I was 11. My mom got a new like partner within like nine months. It was, yeah, it was like, and then, you know, I had to fight for attention, right? Like if there wasn't something wrong, I was a good kid, but I still didn't get the attention because it was actually needed over here. And I didn't get that. So I, I took on the role of everyone else's happiness is my responsibility. So I was very much the same, doing everything for everyone else, the people pleasing, the perfectionism. And I'm not sorry about that because it really provided me an angle to understand people because I find a lot of people are in the same sort of way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I truly believe also, you know, I want the person that's gone through the shit. <laughs> I want you to have had those shit sandwiches so we can actually be ourselves. That's right. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but growing up feeling really unworthy and like super unlovable and like there was something really wrong with me. Um, I really need a lot of compassion from someone. I need a very compassionate approach because I'm already like, I'm already dialed up sometimes like a 15 inside my own head about how bad I am. Mm. So, and I find that the more compassionate leaders and coaches are the ones who've been through the most and who have really like suffered a lot and experienced a lot of pain and come out on the other side. And that's just my, that's my belief. And that's my experience. So when I, I've used Instagram as a way to like really, really shine a light on the amount of suffering and pain, um, to allow people to sort of also 
see if they can find it within themselves, some like a little bit of self-forgiveness, right? Wow. If she can forgive herself, then I can, you know? Um, so that actually leads me to the next part of my work with people. I am not a heady person. I was, I was a very heady person. Let me reframe that. I am no longer a heady person. I was, um, today I use my body as my compass. Like you probably do. I can feel that in you. Um, and so I teach people how to do the same thing. So if a client comes to me and they've got some issue that they're dealing with in their life, whether it's like a relationship or it's money related, or it's, you know, it's, it's career, whatever that is, you know, this, and I know this and your audience knows this because I'm assuming your audience is probably pretty evolved. None of what it's presenting is really what's going on. Right. A lot of this has to do with how do you feel around difficult energies in your body? Mm. Like, how do you respond to that? What's your tolerance for that? How do you react to that? Um, how do you just be with that? How do you allow that to just be right? So my, my approach is I love all the, like the stuff you tell me and I, I acknowledge it and I get it, but I take people deep into their nervous system, mm. right? And we connect with whatever that pain is or whatever that fear is of the feeling, right? Some of us fear shame, we fear guilt, we fear fear. Okay. Right? So that's actually what's presenting in your life is something's happening externally. You've got a thought about that, right? And you've probably got that thought that you've had for a long time and it has something to do with how deeply flawed you are or something else. And then that thought brings up some sort of an emotion for you that it doesn't, maybe that emotion for you feels a little scary. And then you go into reaction mode, mm. right? And you go into what I would say a trance. Yes. Go into trance. That. The, the trance of the pattern that you know well, you think trance. it's comfortable. It's not. It's not safe. It's not. And the trance actually reinforces what your mind wants you to believe is that you're separate. Mm. You are separate mm. from this person. You are not a part. You don't belong. And that's all that trance does. And so we have a bunch of people, millions people, of people walking around in this trance right now, feeling separate. And it's a complete, it's completely an illusion. It's not even, it's not real, um, but it feels very real. And I can speak to that because I was in the trance. I was living in the illusion and it felt unbelievably real. And I was eating it up. Right. So another thing, you know, in terms of working with me, what I do too, is I, we get like sort of I like to get people's worlds like really soft and a lot like smaller. What's all the noise you got going on, right? Like I don't look at my Instagram for the first two hours when I wake up. Yeah, just I, have the, I have the power hour, I call it, where it's like just pure inward power for self and like connection. Like that's my number one in the morning. However, years prior would be exactly that grab the phone, scroll the things, somebody yeah. needs me, let me be the savior. I remember even in landmark days before I was fully transformed from all of that noise, yeah. I was like in all the groups, I was always a group leader. I'm always the first one to respond to someone. I got to be the one. And I didn't realize how much energy and just like, it didn't feel good. It was almost like I was addicted to it though. It was very, um, I like I couldn't break it. Yeah. Sort of graspy energy. <laughs> graspy, the wanty. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can actually like feel, you can feel like the texture of that. So I work with a lot of people who've been living in their heads for, you know, how many ever years to decades, myself included at the time. And what I find works for people is giving that. So let's take that graspy, grippy sensation that you just went, mm, God, because it's so familiar. You're just like, takes one second to be like, oh, feel oh. 
grindy. Okay. So here we go. So what you just did, my love, is you're giving it like, you're actually giving it a texture right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So for those people who are listening and they're not watching, like Dana right now, like she just sort of like lifted her one shoulder to one ear and another shoulder to the other ear. And she's kind of collapsing and she's like, right. Like you make that. So what, this is a way to actually work with adults who have been in their head for a long time is to give the feeling like a posture, give it like some sort of a color, a voice, a sound, like, you know, and when I think of grippy, I think of my shoulders coming down, like me, like, oh, just like caving in and like my belly is just like contracting and this like, I don't know, gray goblin, right? And there's like, his insides are coming out of his mouth. Like, that's how I feel in the moment. Right. And I find that when you can sort of like give things a visual, especially feelings, it helps adults to actually understand like what, what they're doing, like what it is that they're um, looking for in the moment too. So I have a client who, who's going through a separation and who's having a really hard time not looking at her ex's Instagram. Mm, Okay. And his new partner. Ah. And of course, and oh my God, I went through this whole thing so hard. (laughs) And so, uh, what, but, but, you know, the whole, her thing was like, I just can't stop. And, Mm -hmm. you know, she's really being hard on herself about this whole thing. And she's kind of beating herself up about it and she's making herself wrong. And, you know, she's setting all these parameters for herself and, and, you know, it's not working. And so she's coming to me and she's feeling really defeated. And I, I totally get that. I have a lot of compassion for that. I think anybody who's listening does, because you know, when you're doing it, that you don't want to be doing it. Like, you know, this, we know this. And so what we did is I had her sit down in our session. And, you know, I I said, like, when you go to pick up the phone and you go to open Instagram, what is, what do you, what's happening? Like in your body, where are you feeling something? And she's like, "Mm, you know, yeah, my, my, it's kind of like my chest and I'm like, okay, great. And so like, let's enter, we call it entering through the upset. So you Mm -hmm. enter through the upset. Great. Well, can you kind of give that, that, can you give it like a posture? And she's like, it's very collapsed. And so we'll go into that. And then she ended up formulating a whole character. Wow. And it was wonderful. Right. Yeah. And so we came out with this whole character and it's got like a name, we named it and it's got a, you know, it's got a whole life to itself and and that she's like, she's been co-creating with this thing. She didn't even know. And now she's like, Oh my God, this is amazing. And so then the imitation is when you go to pick up your phone, embody the character. Mm. So that's what she'll, she'd pick up the phone, you know, and, and the first few times it wouldn't work, right. Or it uh, not wouldn't work. She would forget. So, you know, you, you just, Oh, I'm in, I'm in it. Now I'm in the trance. Here we are. Shit. I'm feeling like garbage. Oh, right. I was supposed to do something. What was I supposed to do? Right. So at least we've broken some sort of a pattern there. So the first few times it might not, she might not remember, but, but like by time three, she went to pick up her phone and she, and for those people who aren't watching, who are listening, I'm picking up my phone and I'm, I'm doing that like collapse, like gobbly, like, and, and she's making these noises and she's being phone. Yeah. And she's opening up Instagram. It's like, and she's like, wow. And you know what happens is energy can't be created or destroyed. It just takes a new form. So the energy takes a new form and suddenly the phone, the desire of whatever she seeks in the phone isn't even there. Hmm. And she puts the phone down. And she feels some, some sense of relief and resolve Mm. because the emotion wants to be expressed. Yeah. Yes. Oh my goodness. I am learning that. So very beautifully lately, of course. Um, So similar to you always lived in my head, very, you know, detached as my, uh, my mother was very detached emotionally the only emotional affirmation or confirmation I ever got as a child was from my sister when she was available, being that she was dealing all that she was dealing with. And now that I find out, especially through human design, that my authority is, is emotional. 
which means I actually need to sit with things and take my time and not be so quick to be like, let's go, let's go, let's go. like productivity workhorse. I got to slow it down, feel the feelings, check in if they're even mine because I'm so empathetic. Mm. And then, okay, do I feel the same about this thing as I did before? And really, and I got to tell you, <laughs> I'm going from predominantly in the mind to trying to even understand what an emotion is, is very interesting journey. So I really commend you for what you do for people and just bringing it back to the emotion and, and allowing people to see it's not that scary. I feel like we use emotions as like the monster in our closet where we're like, we're too even scared to look. And my invitation always now of going through it all is take a look. It's really not that bad. Yeah. I mean, it's not a walk in the park. It does suck still, <laughs> but what's mm-hmm. available to you on the other side is what has you go. Okay. I'm ready. Do you agree with this? It's not that we don't want to feel it. It's mm. that we just, wow. Mm. Oh, yeah. Wow. I would say it's like, you don't know how to be with it. It's like a foreign object, a foreign person energy. You're just like, same with the phone. I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> you know. It's the same kind of experience, but really, yeah. you know, utilizing your brain for more good things. Like I would say for me, discernment was really beneficial for me to learn because I was always looking to other people to live my life. It's like, well, should I be feeling this way? Or is this okay? Like, I don't know. And it was just like, and I always found this interesting. I have this conversation with my friends around, you know, there's no like detachment inside of our love. It's always been in my experience and a lot of others is like a transactional thing. Yeah. And we don't have this like separation of like, I can love myself no matter what. I don't need approval or validation outside of myself, but we don't have a conversation to be like, Hey, you're the authority. Now you can take on whatever you need to take on. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's a missing in life, especially when you grow up. I mean, you're an adult and you're walking around like a six-year-old and we can't understand why our world doesn't work. So it's just, you know, there's all these little nuances that we could really benefit to pay more attention to. Mm-hmm. So really commending that we both have this way of embodiment and like being really slowing it down and just being a space that people need. So, yeah. Sounds like you really help people to get to the core. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's that's it. It's so incredible. That's like really um uh that's really freeing for someone mm-hmm. when you can help them get to the core. Mm-hmm. My number one value is freedom. So that does make sense. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah. And if, if do you do you follow gene keys at all? Actually, a friend of mine mentioned it to me. I had a little dabble. I would love to get more into it. So please tell me any wisdom you might have about this. <laughs> very neat, very neat. And it's, uh, it, it, you know, it pulls from all the similar texts uh, text and et cetera, and like astrology. Um, and for me, one of the things that I learned is I'm meant to transcend victim consciousness into freedom in this lifetime. Wow. Right. And that, I just started learning about all this in the last year. And I went, that makes a heck of a lot of sense. And I still could not see where I was being a victim or playing victim or in that triangle with people. Like I couldn't like, I couldn't fully see a lot of these things, um, which is why I made the conscious decision to stay sober, celibate, single, like remove any of those things that take me out of being with myself and with the the pain and then there it all was like I could see I can see it all pretty clearly now but uh yeah gene keys is something I would highly recommend uh getting your chart read and even just some of the language the verbiage it gives you a lot of like gives you some context (laughs) 
love this. I'm actually going to write this down because my very vast, multi passionate brain will forget, perhaps. Yeah, and you can you can get your chart read for free online. Really? Same. It's like the same as getting your your human design. Uh, not read to you, but they'll they'll print out like they'll show you what your chart looks like. Oh yes, let's go. Yeah. I think I've done it once before, kind of forgot about it. That's yeah. brilliant. Thank you so much for the reminder. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. It's got some good, great language, right? You just take those words and you go, okay, victim. I understand what a victim is. Okay. Interesting. This is what I'm working on. Not mm-hmm. exactly what I'm mind, but I'm, I'll go for it. Yeah. And it was great for me to anchor into that. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad to know someone that is uh, really called to be this person because victim consciousness is very prevalent in a lot of our society. Um, and a lot of people aren't even aware, you know, and I think awareness is half the battle to any sort of change or transformation. So, um, another point to it is a real epidemic in our, I uh, believe victim consciousness is actually the core issue. I would, I would agree. I would agree. I, um, experienced it myself been had a very strong model after it um you know Mm -hmm. there's a lot of generational things there too and just societally to keep ourselves stuck and in fear Mm -hmm. all the time um just like this mass manipulation which is like kind of weird to kind of understand because you're like well I've been taught these things all my life. And what you're basically saying through this development journey is 99.9% of it isn't even true. Mm -hmm. So that alone can be a lot for anyone to wrap their brain around. So if anyone out there is going through the motions, trying to figure out who they are, maybe you're on a journey currently and you're feeling like what the actual F Mm-hmm. we get you <laughs> we're here and we're here to really cause a shift in what that looks like for everybody so yeah for fear please reach out and just yeah community that's what community so yeah you're super spot on um do you direct your clients to like is there something you would like to suggest to clients where to go <sighs> you hold or host a community? I do. And I don't. So this is my transition right now is like, I was offline. My predominant work was with men and I'm now consciously choosing to work with women. Um, there is some more work to be done in the sisterhood and all of that kind of thing, but I am built for community. It's in my chart to be love and community and just like, you know, intimacy and all of those things. So it's no wonder Tantra found me, which is my belief. (laughs) And I'm really desiring to build a community uh, of sisterhood in a very Mm -hmm. sacred and like compassionate way. And SELP has provided me the opportunity with the project to I'm hosting an event, a community event that is a sacred playground. So women can come and they can be, and they can learn that they don't have to fear other women. You know, I feel like if we don't change that inside of ourselves, that competitive, like gotta survive the victim consciousness will proceed and we won't ever see the world that we want to. So um, yeah. Great. <laughs> Love it. Yes. 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 And that feels like it's very meaningful for you because of what you've experienced. So that's already, it's got a magnetism to it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, just one quick thing that I thought was really cool. I think the universe really guided this one. So mm-hmm. I was struggling to find, you know, I wanted to give back as well make it kind of a donation base, maybe a fundraiser for local women's shelters. And I had some back and forth with local women's sh- shelters in Hamilton. It wasn't really working out. And actually two weeks ago, my grandfather had passed away. 
Mm -hmm. And God rest his soul, such a strong headed entrepreneur, but inside was such a teddy bear. He was a very well-known advocate for the local women's shelter in in Halton, which is like Oakville, Milton, and all those areas. So I emailed them and I said, you know, my grandfather, such and such, da, 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 da. And the girl that I was speaking with was like, holy shit, I was been to every fundraising event he's ever done for us. And he's been, he's donated like hundreds of thousands of dollars to this organization. And it just like, my heart blew open Mm. knowing that I could like, not only fulfill on my dream and my vision with this project, but also continue on the donation and the, the, the service of which we can for these women being that it's already in my bloodline. I was just like, what are the chances though, that I would have thought of that. It was presented in his book when we were like reading his life, uh, his life book. And then, you know, he just unbelievable. So. Wow. Wow. That's very, sounds very meaningful to you. Well, it got just 10 times more meaningful. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. That's a really beautiful share. Oh. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. I can't wait to see how that unfolds. Let me know how I can support with that event. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I should be speaking with the woman tomorrow, actually. So we will get on that. Thank you. Oh, I just want to take a moment just to really appreciate the space and your time. Mm. Uh, is there anything else you feel called to share? Just want to say a wrap up, anything that's in your heart? Um, the, the one thing that's coming through right now is... Um, Sometimes this work isn't accessible to everybody, Mm -hmm. you know, depending on where you're at in your life. It can be financially, it can be time, right? There can be just a bunch of different things. And uh, it can be just a fear. (laughs) You know, it's pretty vulnerable to come into a container with you or I and and to to say, hey, listen, I, I think I need some support. Um, or I don't even know why I'm here, but I feel like I need to talk to you. Um, and so for me, my, my goal is to start sharing more tangible tools. Just take it. You don't have to pay me. We don't got to work together. Like this is so meaningful for me at this point. Like there were moments this past year where I kind of wondered if I was going to make it. Like there were some moments where I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make this. I don't know if I'm going to make it out alive. Grief is, it just rips you to shreds mm-hmm. it's awful. and so as we're talking about events or you know working with us or anything like that or communities um and yours might be free which you can is yours free or is it something you have to pay for your SALP project um I'm just making it like donation based so it's it's up to the the event goer <laughs> The event to go up. So uh, I love that, right? So that leaves it in their hands. It's like, what do you feel is available for you? Um, and that is kind of where my business is going right now, more so and more so, is how can I make this more accessible to more people? How can I just give way more away? Mm. Just give way more away. Mm. And yeah, it's like, I think sitting in generosity and, and being generous is what I maybe is missing sometimes for us because it just it seems like why would you go that route because you got to make you got to make a dollar and it can also duplicate and replicate itself in such powerful ways so yeah just for those of you who are listening if you continue to follow me there's a lot more just like from the goodness of my heart I want you to have this stuff it's not because I'm special that I've got this or people who get it are special, like not at all. In fact, this is like human, this is basic humaning 101 stuff. Okay. So yeah. But it means to be human. <laughs> mm-hmm. I want people to, I want people to have access to it. I care so much. I can tell you do too, Dana. 
Yeah. So I'm actually, I want to state this out loud. So it comes more alive in the world, but I am actually going to request uh, at the foundation that some of the donations go to the women to take the landmark forum. Oh, I mean, amen. Yeah. Mic drop on that note. <laughs> That's so beautiful, babe. Yes. <sighs> It was bold yeah. request week the other week. And I was like, what can I do? And it was just like, oh my God, yes. If I had all the money in the world, I would pay for every single human on the planet to take this wonderful, intensive, deep dive into soul. I mean, it's, I know it's just about human self, but like for me, it was a very core value inside of this, my soul. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. You're very welcome. All right. Well, I think we should wrap it up there. I think this has just been absolutely wonderful to be in together and witness. And thank you for sharing all of you. Really, it's tremendous. And I know a lot of people can benefit from that. So it's what you do best. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for this beautiful interview yeah and being in it with me <laughs> thank you so much and thank you for everyone who's listening viewing all of the things i will leave some um, information in the comments so we can get in touch if you want to have some support or if you want to be of support i know it takes a village a community to really have things shift and change for everyone so I would just love any and all to be involved that feel called to. Yeah. Fabulous.